Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, welcome back, everybody. The way you express yourself really is everything in life, how you communicate, whether it's verbally, whether it's through an email, whether it's through a report, presentation, whatever it might be. A lot of that has a story in it. And we all have stories. We talked about la that last time we got together with her. She is a storytelling coach, screenwriter. She works with people to help them craft their communication. And she's back with us today. We're going to talk about origin stories. And she's Michelle Cutler. Welcome back. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you. Very nice to be here again with you. Learned a lot last time we got together a lot of eye-opening things in terms of what goes into a strategy session with somebody to help them through this. And it's amazing how many of us can verbalize things, but then when it comes to writing, it's a whole different ballgame or the other way around. But this is why we need help in learning about communication. Origin stories, what is that? Well, if you think about it, um, so let's say on our, our first call together on the last episode, you asked me, how did I get here? How did I get to where I am to, to be offering these services and this business? And in that way, I told you my origin story for this business, for sure. example, or for my services. It can also be an origin story. It can also be your relationship. How did you two meet? You know, what did, let's say your, your friend that passed away that you had to, to speak about that we talked about last time. Um, a lot of it had to do with how did you two meet and, and where did that story, where did that story take you? Um, it can be your business. It could be a skill or a profession um, that that's the origin story can be of anything, really. I, I think in the first case, of course, when we talk origin story, it's usually a birth story, a story mm -hmm. that we've heard. And it's, that's usually what you do in a life writing. Let's say you take life writing course or memoir course or anything. Usually the first sort of exercise is write your birth story. It's something that you are familiar with. Um, either it's been told many times in front of you by your parents. Um, it could be if you're adopted or you, you know, have a different situation than just, you know, being born into your family, you still know your origin stories. How did you end up with this family? How did you end mm. up from, from baby to toddler to who you were. So your birth story is something you walk around with. Um, many times, if you think about it, it's not something you remember yourself. It's a story that's been told to you that you maybe you don't know all the details of your birth story. Perhaps they've just not been shared and some families don't sh like to share these things. Sure. And you decide you wanna go out on your own and say, I wanna know where I come from. And you start doing research and you look at records and you find other people at the time um, these are all ways to create your own, you know, to understand who you are, where you come from, whether it means that's who you are today is up to you. But many people will ask the question, so where are you from? How did you get here? Why is your name like that? Why, what is your name about can be a, an origin story as well. So a lot of times when you start there, you know, it, it opens up other things. I see something here that I didn't realize until you spoke about it. But firsts are fantastic. And there's a first in almost everything we do in almost every day. So you spoke about my friend and I needed to deliver something on the radio about her passing. That day, I walked my dog in town. I just needed some time, wanted to think. I'm not going to go into what happened, but it was something profound. I'm going to leave it at that. But there was a first involved. And what was that first? Kind of the first time I've ever walked my dog in town or around people. We just don't get out. <laughs> I really need it. It was fantastic. But there was a first <laughs> in that. And when I tell people that story, I include that first. Yeah, I never take him out. So I was like, one of the first times I took him out. Origin. It's the origin of that situation. So when you think about it, there are a lot of origins or firsts in a lot of what we deal with every day. And in that, there are stories, right? Exactly. And then if you if you wanted to, you could um, add some context, um, context, add some flavor. Sure. What was the weather like when you're walking the dog? What was the weather like? What Did you see anyone you know? Did you pass 
by a shop that you always pass by and suddenly realize, hey, I'm walking the dog. I can't even go in and get what I would like to get because I have the dog with me. I mean, you start to notice you've, you've added this one little character to your everyday story, the character being your dog. And you're going, you're not somewhere foreign. You're not in a foreign land that you've never been before. You just happen to be, change it a little half degree with the dog there. And of course we all know, I have a dog too. The dog's right behind me on the sofa there. He's yes. keeping notes. <laughs> He's taking notes. <laughs> you know, the, the, anytime you add a, an element, um, it, it opens up new possibilities. And again, like you said, something profound it's okay. You don't want to share it. I, of course, oh, I can know. share it. I don't want I to want take to up. Know. <laughs> do, you want, do you want me to share it? I don't want to take up time here, but you know, in if, the story, if it's profound, if it's profound, I think we should know. <laughs> I believe in signs. I believe things are presented to us and sometimes we don't see them because we're not open to them. I'll laser the story. First time I really walk my dog into town. This is a town I spent a lot of time in growing up. My mom worked in this town as did my aunt. As, and my grandmother lived there as well. I was vibing my mom. Mom, send me a sign. Send me a sign. You do it every once in a while. Could use it with the passing of my friend. This is somebody who I worked with on the radio for many years. We were very close. As we're walking through town, me and my dog, we come up to a pole that has a plaque on it dedicated to my aunt. So I tell my dog, don't pee on that. <laughs> he wanted to. I'm like, stop that. Don't pee on anything. So I sit down at an outdoor cafe brewery with my dog, just sitting there having a drink and somebody's doing karaoke DJ there. People pick songs. As soon as I sat down, the first song that somebody chose to sing was called the Rose by Bette Midler. Oh yeah. <laughs> my mom's name is Rose. She passed away five years ago. So I was like, Oh, all right. I asked for a sign. Eh, whatever. Maybe, maybe not. The very next song that came on that somebody selected to sing was on the radio by Donna Summer. <laughs> so my friend who passed, we were on the radio. Right. Two songs later, a 10-year-old comes walking up and wants to hear a song called Spirit of Radio by the band Rush. He nailed it, by the way. You know, he's got a high-pitched <laughs> voice and so does the lead singer of that band. And I'm just sitting there taking it all in. I was like... I think that was my sign. What are the chances of it connected to radio when the very first song is my mom's name? Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, picked up my dog and was like, all right, time to leave now. <laughs> Get our sign. But I think you're right in that that all could have passed without you noticing it also. You could have just been on your phone and not even paid attention, right? So yeah. there's a huge part of being able, for you to be able to tell us that story, which was lovely, by the way, and made me think of some things as well. Um, you had to be in the moment and present, paying attention, thinking about who you, what you had just come from and what you were thinking about. Sure. Um, clearly, clearly the connection to your mom is important. And even it sounds like the generational of, uh, you know, maternal generations um, in this town. And already you've started in a way to create a little world, a little world that we can enter. And if you wanted to develop that further, for example, into a story, a short story or an essay or anything hmm. it you've already started to create some beats like story beats you know here we come upon the pole we see the we see the in memoriam and then a little comedic relief dog don't pee on this pole this is aunt josephine's pole yes. <laughs> or <whatever. laughs> right or i'm guessing the name um and so you know, if you actually said ahead. her name, if you actually said her name, I, I would have just dropped. Like, it's like, how does she know that? Yeah. Caroline. Is it Caroline? Uh, B. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm totally yeah. guessing. <laughs> I'm not the spiritualist or I'm not the right. evidentiary psychic. Right, right. Um, but, um, but yeah, so, so you've just, you know, shown a great example. And again, it's sort of like what we were talking about before with my hair dye conundrum. Sometimes it's, really the most mundane, you know, everyday moment that can really um, send you somewhere, send you on a bit of a journey. And um, and I was thinking about how uh, David Mamet, who's a playwright and a dramatist, uh, had said at one point that even if we're talking about like dramatic tension, that a knot in your shoelace, something as simple as your shoelace being knotted 
is tent can create tension if you're in a hurry, if you need to go somewhere, if you're, I mean, the, it's can be, think about um, Tanya Harding's shoelace, you know, on the ice <laughs> in, the, in the Olympics, right? right? I mean, it can be, you can take me in my house with my shoelace and, oh, I'm trying to get out of the house and this is stressing me out. But then you can take that shoelace and all the way to a high stakes situation like the Olympics. Um, so again, I think you're, like you're saying, paying attention to the opportunities of everyday experiences. Um, and, and you also did something interesting as well, where you were looking at the present tense, I'm walking my dog, but in that present tense, it brought you back to moments of the past that are important to you still. Like there's, there's always that connection. Not that we have to be nostalgic, you know, all the time and it's not about being sentimental um, as much as it is uh, as you're saying paying attention the difference between you know a slice of life moment um, and perhaps something that's more like what they call the cradle to the grave where you you go from birth to death you know like an, a biography of someone's entire life is one thing but when you have sort of the slice of life moments you can really get so much out of them just small moments sure we don't realize the impact of maybe those moments having on us. And it goes back to the origin. There's, I'm, you know, I'm talking about the origin of, of me in this story because that's where I grew up. There's one origin, the a first. There's a first in, I never walk my dog into town. Shame on me, but whatever. And there also was a driving force. I could have done anything that night. I had friends doing this, doing that. Why don't you hang out? And something kept saying to me, no, you need to be alone and you need to go into town and walk that dog. And, and I did. And I'm glad I did because those things happen, whether you believe there's a connection or not, I choose to believe, mm -hmm. but telling a story and thinking those things out and trying to be, clear as possible is so important so important especially when you're organizing thoughts in an email but a lot of us a lot of us could use help with that we all can we all can because we don't know until we tell the story and somebody else says you know maybe you want to change that where you're like you know adjust it a little bit uh, but it can be a game changer in expressing yourself and same thing you know with with careers Mm -hmm. It's sort of like a word I've noticed that you like to use a couple of times, which is this laser idea where he's like laser, laser. And but I think that's a really good little mantra to have um, when you start to feel that you're sort of spinning out. I mean, you can kind of feel it in yourself when you're when you're telling a story, you can kind of feel when you're spinning out into the like sequel before you've finished the, <laughs> you finished the, the pilot episode. Can I, can I like share where that word 15. comes from? The laser <laughs> yes, word. Yes, I don't yes. know if I told you this. Stop me if I did. I am part of a men's group and we share a lot of things. And one of the men in the group, fantastic man, great voice, by the way, everything. He's got wonderful things to say. But when he's pressed to talk in front of a group, he goes like on a tangent and he starts staring in different directions. And there's a, a few men that are closer to him in the group. And as he's doing it, they're like, laser, laser. <laughs> so that's like the word, <laughs> it's the word of the last couple of months. And right away, it kind of resets him. But I get it because he goes off on these tangents where, and one of our values in, in this group is respect others' time. So it's like if you're going into a story, it's like, I'm going all the car screeching down the road, laser, come back, come back, you know, pinpoint laser. So that's where that word yeah. comes from. Well, I, I had a similar, um, or I guess a parallel experience in when I was working on something that I was writing. When I first started writing prose, because I come from screenwriting. So screenwriting is very action, or you know, you write action, you write dialogue, basically. You set up a world, you create stakes, um, but it's not the same thing as reading a book. Like when you read a screenplay, it's not like you're reading a novel. And I was trying to write more in this novelistic way, nonfiction. And um, I just was going fast. Like, I just assumed you were with me and ready to go. <laughs> and the the mentor who I was working with, the author at the time said, Michelle, it's like you're in a car. You're pulling up in this fast car and you're like, get in, get in. 
And we all want to get in because that car looks awesome. Like it looks like you're having a great time in that car. And yep. they're like, get in. And I jump in this passenger seat. And before I can even put on the seatbelt, you've got me down the road and you've got me here and you've got me there. And I'm like, I'm just trying to get on my seatbelt. So I thought, oh, I understand. Now I understand. Give people a moment. There's a lot that can resonate in one moment. There's a lot that can resonate in, in one detail or one memory. Um, hmm. But it is that laser uh, for you, laser. And for me, I would say maybe seatbelt or something to okay. it, or like or off the brake, you know, like tap that brake a teeny bit. Um, but it depends, like you said, on sort of where your strengths and weaknesses lie, which you you don't know where they lie until you where, have experience until you try it. You know, like I think if you work with me, you can spend quite a bit of time sort of as we're doing, just riffing a bit, just getting loose sure. and comfortable figuring out and opening up. I share something with you. You share something with me. Um, it's an exchange. And then somewhere in there, like I said, there's these sparks that happen that make you feel like, oh, maybe, why did I want to tell this story? Maybe this is why. There's something. You can feel it. It's a sensation. You know, mm. I I had an experience like where I was interviewing for a, a Cambridge and I heard myself, I had like an outer body experience where I was listening to myself speak in this interview. And I, all I wanted to say was shut up, stop talking. Like I couldn't stop myself. I was telling so many things that I have no idea if they were on subject or not. I had prepared as well. I mean, I had prepared. And um, I started to think in retrospect, I was thinking, I wonder if I just didn't really want that opportunity like there was a reason I was kind of sabotaging myself by telling too much story like I had to I had to backpedal you know so there, mm. there's so much that can be gained by practicing by drafts working on drafts to not feel that you're again like I said before I'm a firm believer in not worrying about grammar or um, paragraphs or anything that you feel might hinder you from expressing yourself um, until you're ready to present. Those are presentation tools. Presentation tools are grammar, structure, syntax, language, right? That's when you're presenting. That's the hair right. dye. That's dyeing my roots for an audio podcast, yes. um, <laughs> right? So that's, but but what's the story? Why are you there in the first place? What what are you here to tell tell us in the first place? And why now? Why mm -hmm. now is important. Have you found over the years that in your mind you have better perfected your storytelling skills? Yeah, definitely. It comes through. It really does come through practice and um, taking risks, like going into situations. This, for example, like this. I it, this is a risk for me. I'm speaking, not writing. You know, so I used to feel better uh, as a when I went to film school as a director, I felt better behind the camera than in front of it. I had to do some acting classes. I blink a lot. I just blink a lot. Apparently, you should not blink a lot when you're an actor. Um, I Now we're going to blink a lot, both of us, since you said I, I it. Do, I do. <laughs> I already do. But so, you know, you, you have to find your place. You have to you take, take chances. Um, put yourself into situations that may not be comfortable, you know. Mm -hmm. Not not ones that are harmful. You don't not put don't put yourself in harm's way. But I think we can all find moments uh, if you're sitting in a situation with a group of people and you you start to feel like you want to say something, but you're not the type to break in. You're not the type to do that. Um, maybe that's a moment to go home and figure out what was it I wanted to say. Can I prepare myself better for that moment? Like, or I, an example would be at a I was at a wedding. Very good friends of mine. And I didn't know, I always miss weddings. I'm pretty bad. I always show up late. I'm never prepared. I don't know. It's a subconscious thing. And so I'm at this wedding and I didn't know that people were going to give speeches or give toasts. And so friends were getting up and giving toasts about the couple. And I was like, oh, I have something I want to say. I'm sure I do. And I thought of it at the hotel at like two in the morning, like way past the moment. And I thought, if I ever have the opportunity to speak well of my friends or of loved ones, I would hopefully be prepared in some way to say it. Now, some people have the natural talent of speaking off the cuff publicly 
Um, that's a mm -hmm. gift, right? I mean, you can train for it, but I also think it's a gift. Um, Great. So yeah, so for me, I know that I need to prepare myself um, to be able to, like, as we said before, to be present and in the moment, but still know that the story is going to get you there. I completely agree with you. I'm not one of those people that can just jump up and spur the moment, moment and speak. It's just not me. I think about what I'm going to say, how I'm going to say it. I have things already prepared in my head. Maybe I'm not going to use them, but it's always sitting around in there. If something goes wrong in a situation, backup plan. And there are those those genuine fabulous moments where you dyed your hair and <laughs> those things, you know, happen like last time. Um, but I prepare, but we can also over prepare as well. So mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot, but everybody's different. You know, one size doesn't fit all. I believe I laser a little bit more because I'm used to talking over intros of songs in 14 seconds and having to deliver a lot of information. I think that's where that comes from. I don't know. Maybe I don't laser. I'm not. I think I do. <laughs> it's a good skill. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking about how um, back to this idea of the origin story, you know, the origin and names, sure. right? Let's say, um, and names have narratives too. Names have stories. And I had always, so my name's Michelle. Um, it had come through. I know that on my birth story that, they didn't know whether I would be a boy or a girl. I know that I was named after my grandfather, Michael, who had passed away. In the Jewish tradition, you're named after, you don't, you're not named after someone who's living. So we knew I was going to be my father's father. Hmm. Um, and then they said, oh, it's a girl. And so they went with Michelle. And uh, as the story is told to me, everyone in the birth room sang Michelle Mabel, the Beatles song. Sure. Okay, this is the birth story I've lived with my whole life. And, and I... Was in a, I was asked at one point to give the origin story of my name. And I thought, oh, how boring. It's just me when I was born and it's the Beatles song, right? So I decided, well, let me research the Beatles song a little bit. Maybe there was a Michelle. Maybe there's something I can, you know, relate to. The funniest part about it is that, is that uh, Paul McCartney, because at the time, French sounding songs were popular. Mm. Um, and Paul McCartney was just making up a song that rhymed in French at parties with the guitar as a like playfully. And then they and then they recorded the song and it became a huge hit. There is no Michelle that they were in love with. There's no French Michelle. So for me, uh, I again I also think there's humor will always save you in any moment. In any story going off track, if you throw a little humor in there, mm -hmm. somehow you can kind of get your get your people back. Um, and so I thought, well, that's so funny. I'm trying to find some importance in my name and it's the Beatles and it really meant nothing to them. You know, so I think, again, it, you take I was being a bit lazy. I thought, oh, I know my story. I know my origin story of my name. Um, but then you take a little step further and and you might find something you didn't know. And you might and it might be funny to you or it might be, oh, my gosh. Oh, I didn't. You don't know. That's sort of the exciting part. But it's interesting. And you, like, I didn't know. I thought that was a girlfriend of one of the Beatles. <laughs> there was a Michelle. And by the way, my name's not Steve. What's your name? Am I supposed to guess? Wait, uh, no. Am and, I, and, it, okay. and, it, and, and it's it's irrelevant. I don't even need to share it. But the story is, the way I got the name Steve was I started in radio at 17. I was working at a station for five months, and then I got the big job at a big station. Blessed. Fantastic. Two other DJs came from that smaller station. I was the third. The bigger station didn't want everybody thinking that they were stealing staff. So they said to me, you need to change your name. So I said, I, you don't even have to pay me. I, this is the dream job. I just want to be on the air. They handed me a baby book. I went like that with my eyes closed. My finger landed on Stefano. And Steve is the closest regular name. I'm Steve. It means nothing. <laughs> it's not a middle name. It's That's how I came up with it. And Harper <laughs> is my legal last name. A lot of people think, oh, that's a made up name because it sounds generic. No, that's really my last name. Yeah. <laughs> to your point, there is an origin story in most everything and i feel that every story is interesting there's the little pieces that we pull out of it um and this is just a piece of what you offer 
in coaching and helping people find their story, tell their story, or just communicate a little bit better. Uh, Michelle, how do we find you? Yeah, so um, I have a website. It's www.michellecutler.com where I have a contact form. Uh, you can contact me through there. I also have socials on Facebook and Instagram um, that are my personal socials, not my business, but you can definitely get an idea of who I am. I'm, I don't ha have anything to hide. Um, and the business is open 24 seven, really. I'm, it's a virtual storytelling coaching. So we don't need to meet in person. We do like you and I are doing here on Zoom. Um, and it can be, you know, anything from a strategy session to development to last looks, which I call last looks like when you're shooting a film and you call in the prop department, hair department, everybody to give every department gives the last look before you actually shoot the take to mm. make sure that all the details are as they should be for that. So I have a service I call last looks, which is let's say you're you've written something and you're ready to press send, you're ready to press submit. You feel like you're there, but something is like, Ugh, I'm not, something could be better. You're just not sure. Wow. And then you send that to me and we work on that. And it's a, that's like a rush thing. It's a 24 hour turnaround type of thing where you, you really feel ready, but you're just not, you just don't know why. And I can help you get there. Fantastic. I didn't even know that existed. I didn't know that was a part of you. Wow. Like you just did a presentation. And you want somebody to give it a last look that's impartial. You know, you could ask a friend over, yeah, take this and proofread it. Uh, somebody with the eyes of experience like yourself. Well, wow, that's fantastic. Wow. Didn't know that uh, you did that. Uh, we're that's out of fun. time. Um, I always love talking with you. Learn a lot. And uh, I didn't know that uh, one of the Beatles never had a girlfriend named Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that I'm sure somewhere along the line, one of them had a girlfriend named Michelle for a minute, but that's not what the song is about. <laughs> that's a, that's a whole think, different story. Right, if you think there are four of them and they've been active for like 50 years, somewhere there was a Michelle, but it's not me. <laughs> I, I agree with you a thousand percent there, even if it was for a very, very short period of time. Uh, <laughs> thank you for today. And we'll catch up next time. Yeah, sounds great. Appreciate Bye -bye. it. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.